Welcome to our episode of uh, 25 of the Atman Show. And today I have a very special guest. His name is Amar Singh Chandel. He's the author of uh, popularly self-help books like Cure Yourself Naturally, Stress to Serenity, and The Best Selling Perfect Health in 20 Weeks. Amar Singh Chandel has been practicing internal yoga, naturopathy, and holistic healing for the past more than three decades. Uh, in the comprehensive stress reduction program that he teaches has helped a large number of people get rid of emotional difficulties like depression, tension, mood swings, and so on and so forth. And he has done his diploma in naturopathy and yogic sciences from All India Nature Cure Federation, uh, New Delhi. So uh, uh, Mr. Amar Singh, please go ahead and complete your introduction. Well, <clears throat> I've been doing three things for a very long time. One is that I ensure that people don't fall sick as often as they normally do. Two, even if they fall sick, I try that they recover themselves without any medical aid. And three, even where medical aid is required, I ensure that they don't do anything which will neutralize the efforts of the doctor. I mean, the patient should not be doing anything which is contrary to what the doctor is trying to do it. So I want them to be complementing the effort of the doctor so that the medicines or the treatment, they become more efficient, more useful. That, in brief, is my role for all this life and uh, helping people this way is my obsession it's not my profession actually right please all right so let's begin our interview my first question is what do you mean by um, uh, we don't fall sick we invite sickness like what are the conditions causes that we invite sickness and what we should not do absolutely you see if you compare your body with a car in a car, we have to follow certain do's and don'ts. Such simple things, inflating the tire to the right pressure, putting in the right grade of gas, taking care of your clutch oil and brake oil and this and that and basic cleaning, etc. These have tremendous role to play in the health of your car. If you follow those things, everything goes fine. If you go wrong, the performance of your car, car also goes down. The cheapest thing in a car is filling in the air in the tire. Imagine what will happen if you're not inflated to the right pressure. Either the fuel would be wasted or your car may be at risk. It may not drive properly. Same way, our day-to-day -day life, our day-to-day -day activities, they ensure that we lead a healthy life. If we don't follow certain precautions, then we invite sickness. Our general belief is that when we fall sick, the only thing we have to do is to run to the doctor or to the hospital. We should be very clear about one thing. There are thousands of diseases in this world, but they all fall in three categories. Two of them definitely require medicines, and the third ones definitely do not require medicine. First category is your infectious diseases. If you catch an infection, you definitely require medicines. For, for example, COVID, you required medicine. All infectious diseases, whether it is tuberculosis or influenza, cholera, smallpox, polio, leprosy, they all require medicine. Then there are genetic problems, 
they also require treatment. But then there are chronic diseases, which are lifestyle diseases. They don't require medicine, they require modification in your lifestyle. Unfortunately, in today's world, they are the main diseases that we have. Let's name about 10 of them. Blood pressure, heart problem, cholesterol, thyroid, obesity, depression, stress, skin diseases. All these are lifestyle problems. These are the ones that we invite ourselves by not following a proper lifestyle. When the doctor says that you cannot cure them, it is not his admission of failure. It is your admission of failure. It is not the job of your doctor to take care of these. You are making mistakes yourself, passing on the responsibility to the doctor. He can only keep the numbers under control. As long as you take the medicine, your numbers would be reasonable. The moment you stop taking those medicines, again, the numbers go sky high. So that is not a treatment. That is just management of your symptoms. That is what I mean when I say that we invite sickness. Lifestyle problems are the biggest uh, killers today only because our lifestyle is terrible. Just terrible. Why so? Because we don't know what we are supposed to do. You may think that this is a typically Indian concept or the Ayurveda concept. Of course, it is Ayurveda concept. But it is also the concept in the Western allopathy also. You will be surprised. You see, the father of allopathy was a Greek doctor called Hippocrates. He is held in such high esteem that whether a doctor does his MBBS from India or England or USA, every doctor takes a Hippocratic oath. So if you swear by him, then you have to follow his advice also. He has four advices. And when you listen to those famous quotations, you would feel that it is an Ayurveda doctor speaking. His first quotation, he says, all diseases begin in the digestive system. Exactly the same thing is said in Ayurveda also. Ayurveda says, Sarvanam Roganam Mool Karana Kupitah Mala. The root cause of all diseases is the fecal matter rotting inside you. So even Hippocrates says the same thing. His second famous quotation. This is advice to all doctors. Before accepting a patient, ask him, is he willing to quit the habits which caused him the disease? Today, nobody asks us for the simple reason. If the doctor tells us, please, are you willing to change? You know what we'll do? We'll change the doctor. <laughs> That's why nobody asks us, but we are shooting ourselves in the foot. Third famous quotation, let your food be your medicine. We not eat food as medicine. The result is that we have to eat medicines like food, not we. Two tablets before breakfast, one tablet after breakfast. Two tablets before lunch, one tablet after lunch. That is happening because we don't take food as medicine. Even you can say for so, vitamins, is vitamins medicine? Well, vitamins are not required at all. If you take proper food, you won't require any medicine, um, any vitamin at all. Mm. It's again a revolve. Of course, if there's a shortage, if you eat the kind of food which does not provide you vitamins, that is your problem. That is, that's what I mean by lifestyle. But listen to the fourth and before you jump to the next topic, you should listen to the last famous yeah. quotation. Okay, okay, okay. 
He says, never prescribe a medicine till a patient can be cured through food. Never prescribe a medicine till a patient can be cured through food. Your first line of defense is not medicines. It is the food. We don't follow that and we invite sickness. Your question, please. No, so see, um, it's a, like, I think um, deficiency of D3, like it is a pandemic, I think. If everybody uh, eats D3, although there's sufficient sunlight, but we sit at home and uh, uh, in our comfortable environment and then, uh, you know, that's a pandemic. Everybody in this whole world, I think, is taking D3. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I mean by lifestyle. Now, supposing you are living in a part of the world where the sunlight is very scarce, then it is a lifesaver. You should take D3 supplement. But in places where sun is abundant, how can you be taking tablets? It is such a free source. Yeah. For your viewers, I should give you a simple formula. It is so easy to get your quota of vitamin D. Mm. Just remember, it's as simple as 20, 30, 40. The formula is called 20, 30, 40. Easy to remember? What it means is 20 days in a month, spend 30 minutes in the sunlight with 40% of your body exposed. That means you should be wearing shorts and a sleeveless. That's all. Go out in the sun for 20 days, morning and evening sun. Don't go at the midday when the sun is very bright. 90 minutes after uh, sunrise, that is the best time. And 90 minutes before sunset, that is the best time. Otherwise, you'll end up uh, having uh, skin problems. So train your body to go out in the morning and evening and you'll be fine. So can you tell right. like the timings, like, you know, people don't know sunrise, sunset, like just give us a timing to be very precise. Uh, it, but the sun, uh, sunrise time varies from place to place. Okay. Whatever time the sun, supposing it uh, sunrise is at 7 o'clock in your city. Mm -hmm. So before 8, 8.30, go out, be in the sun. Mm. Supposing the sun sets at 6.30 in your city, go after 5. If it sets at 8, go any time after 6.30, your choice. You have that window of 90 minutes, go out any time. But do go out. Okay. Right? All right. Um, moving on to our next topic. What are the most lifestyle mistakes that a human being makes in today's modern day society? Like you said that it's a car and you don't fill in the air, then, you know, the, uh, there will be a puncture and stuff like that. Like, so what, how do you relate to a human body? The biggest mistake we make is what we eat and drink. Mm -hmm. You see, our car, if it is designed to run on petrol, it cannot run on diesel. Mm -hmm. If it is to run on diesel, it cannot run on kerosene. Mm -hmm. Same way, our body can take certain foods, it cannot take certain foods. But the kind of food that we eat, especially in the West, is equivalent to putting diesel in a petrol car. All this processed food, so-called junk food. Mm. I don't have to go into single each one of them. But anything which is branded junk food is going to turn your body into a junkyard. And a junkyard is famous for what? Bacteria, viruses, flies, pests, germs. And wherever we have those things, we are bound to have diseases. So if we want to avoid that, we have to eat properly. Let your food be your medicine. Eat food as medicine and you will never have to eat any medicine. Does it also relate to like being a vegetarian as of being non-vegetarian? Like, do you think so? Not necessarily. 
if you can be a vegetarian like nothing like it but even if you are a non vegetarian eat it to the right quantity we just eat too much of it and too often who recommendation is 75 grams that is two and a half ounces in a day 10 ounces in a week and here we are we are on a daily basis we not mind taking a 8 ounce steak at one day when the maximum allowed is two and a half how can you take 8 ounces but we take pride in that kind of food so this is what i call inviting sickness not immediately now that is the difference between a human body and a car if you put contaminated uh, petrol in your car it will conk off in a day or two our body can survive with all kind of nonsensical food for even 20 years but when it gives up believe me it is going to create lot more problems than a car does in old age life is terrible for most people so that should be avoided by leading a disciplined life from very young age all right okay all right um what are the certain rules that the human body runs on can you just give a general rules yeah you see all our diseases all aches and pains all our obesity and even emotional problems they all come on because of uh, 10 reasons they occur the, there are 10 factors responsible for all our ailments physical and emotional out of these 10 9 and a half are in our own hands half is beyond our control we should know what they are mm-hmm. two i have already mentioned number one is your eating two your drinking three your breathing which is very bad these days four lack of exercise five not being able to take rest properly six not sleeping properly seven not managing your stress properly eight your attitude nine your electromagnetic exposure and 10 is your human relationships mm-hmm. when we talk about human relationships we talk about how you treat your acquaintances and how your acquaintances treat you now you cannot make your boss treat you properly there's no way if he's a bad boss nothing can be done about it so that factor is beyond your control that's why i say that out of these 10 factors only 9 and a half are your own but at least you can ensure that you behave properly so these are the 10 factors which are behind every single disease that we have set them right and you can cure yourself of all lifestyle related problems mind you infections will still come genetic problems cannot be solved but then please remember in today's world those have already been taken care of by doctors 100 or 200 years ago most people were dying of polio cholera smallpox leprosy those have been already eliminated unfortunately they have been all replaced by the modern diseases and that is what the lifestyle thing is all about it is our mistake by just eliminating those mistakes all those things can be easily taken care of the sooner we start doing it the better the more late we start the more difficult it is we should not let these diseases put their tentacles into our body very deeply that is our problem we wake up too late all right so these are the 10 reasons behind most of our problems okay what is holistic healing how do we heal ourselves yeah 
You see, these 10 things individually, they are all important for us. Holistic healing takes place when you set all these 10 right. Mm -hmm. It is like studying in a school. If you remember your class 10, I'm sure there were many subjects you were studying, six, seven, eight subjects. Now, even if you are getting distinction in seven out of those eight subjects, and if you flunked in even one paper, you were not promoted to the next class easily. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a conditional promotion. You had to clear that examination. Exactly the same thing here also. All these 10 things have to be set right for a miracle to take place. When we are talking about curing the diseases which are supposed to be incurable, it cannot be done by merely changing your eating habits or breathing properly or doing yoga. It is doing all of them together. That is why it is called holistic healing. What I am saying is that you are sick because of these 10 reasons. If you, if you had known where you are going wrong, then you would have already set it right. And if I could have known it merely by looking at somebody, then I would be a claimant for a Nobel Prize. On the first look, nobody knows where we are going wrong. Only when you get to know the rules about all these 10 things, then a bell rings in your mind that, oh, this is something I'm not doing right. This is something that I have to put in practice. So out of the 10 subjects, you may be already excelling in say eight or nine of them. But even if you are flunking in one of them, you may be sick. Unfortunately, in the present times, we are found wanting in all the 10 subjects. For example, we talked about electromagnetic radiation. Exactly. The time that we spend in front of a screen is phenomenal. If we escape the smartphone, we go to the iPad. And if we switch off our iPad, we go to the laptop. And if not that, then it is the TV itself. Your body cannot take that much strain. Now, nobody is saying that you should stop using these things. Of course, use them. But at least use some discipline. There are certain do's and don'ts involved. You have to follow them. For how much time can you, how much total time can you spend on your screen? After how much time you have to stop looking at it? All those things matter a lot. They seem like very small mistakes. But when they are repeated over the years, then they become a blunder. So holistic healing means setting all of them right. As a teacher, I would want you to get 100 out of 100 in all the 10 subjects. But I also know that it may not be possible for everyone to be that dedicated. So at least get the pass marks. <laughs> we should at least do the bare minimum in all these 10 subjects. I mean, up to say 35% your eating should be right, 35% of your breathing should be right, and 35 do at least 35% of what is expected of you. Even that will lead to holistic healing. If you think that uh, doing less than that will work, no, it will not. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, what are the eight heads under holistic healing? Actually, it is 10 that I just mentioned. Okay, so that's the same thing. Okay. This is exactly the same thing. Yeah, so like uh, with this, um, have you written some guidelines? Like, you know, hey, you know, this much TV you should watch and um, this much time, like you said, 20, 30, 40, right? Some kind of guidelines have you written for all these 10 parameters? Yeah. You see, this electromagnetic radiation is a later creation. Mm -hmm. I wrote my book, uh, Perfect Health in 20 Weeks, about uh, 10 years back. The 
guidelines for the other nine subjects are already there. It gives complete guidelines. I never thought that we will need these guidelines in the electromagnetic radiation also. Mm -hmm. When the next edition of the book comes, I'll incorporate that. But it is common sense that we should be minimizing our time. In most of the smartphones, they themselves warn you. They tell you the daily quota. So we must listen to that. One precaution that I would uh, like to share with your viewers is, first of all, never sit in front of a computer longer than 40 minutes, come what may. Mm. After 40 minutes, you have to get up and walk for 10 minutes at least. That is one precaution everyone must follow. But even when you are sitting for 40 minutes, after every 10 minutes, what you have to do is, for easy remembrance, you can call it a, the formula of 10, 20, 30. I want these things to stick to the mind. So after every 10 minutes, remove your eyes from the screen for 20 seconds, clench your eyes and relax them. Clench them and relax for full 20 seconds, maybe 10 times. Clench and release, clench and release. And then for the next 30 seconds, look at something else which is at least 30 feet away. Look out of the window at something far, far away. Yes. And if it is some mountain or tree which is green in color, all the better. So you have to change your seat in such a way that you are in front of a window where you can look out. This looking at natural green is very important. If you have ever noticed in every eye hospital after the operation, the iPad that they give you, eye cover that they give you is always green in color. That is for a purpose. So such small precautions we have to take. And one more thing, if we use our phone, pad, laptop or TV late at night, it also interferes with our sleep pattern. Mm. So anybody who faces difficulty in falling asleep at time should take the basic precaution of switching off his or her TV and uh, other instruments at least two hours before the sleep time. Supposing you intend to sleep at 10.30, you should stop using your screen after 8.30. I know it will be tough, especially when you have very um, awaited messages coming on the WhatsApp or something, but your sleep is more important. So after 8.30, it is a blackout time. All right. These are the kind of simple things which cause serious illness. And these are the things which, if we follow properly, can save our life. Okay. I just want to ask you, like, uh, with the help of holistic healing, uh, can you briefly say, like, how we can lose weight? Yes. First of all, Weight should be taken as the biggest indicator of our disease. First, please remember a simple word. Extra weight is bad. And as you know, bad spells B-A-D. Where B stands for blood pressure. A stands for arthritis. And D stands for diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of yes or no. It's a question of when. Mm -hmm. If you are blessed with very good genes, then these things may come late in life. If we have some family history of any of these diseases, be sure that these will come at very early age. Now, how to lose weight? You'll be surprised when I say 
that losing weight is the easiest thing in the world easiest thing by following holistic lifestyle would you believe that some of my students right there in your dallas they have lost something like 73 kg 73 kg which translates into more than 160 pounds wow nobody and, people don't weigh only 160 pounds <laughs> that is so if people can lose that kind of weight in fact you can feature some of those people in, in your program what i'm saying is that it is very easy to do it you don't have to specifically do it just following the this holistic lifestyle the weight just melts away you see we all have a optimum some years ago a couple did the my course for their health issue husband was grossly overweight the wife was underweight oh, okay they both followed the same regime he lost something like 30 kg the wife gained something like 15 kg they came to their optimum the body has its own wisdom it's not as if uh, i am teaching something you just leave your body alone the body knows where it has to go if we keep on loading food on it if we keep on ignoring our exercise that is why the body has to put on weight your body is more keen than you to shed weight mm. just give it a little bit of chance and it will surprise you okay uh, it, i remember in the beginning of the conversation you said about relationship like you have professional relationship and you have personal relationship do you think that relationship causes a stress and through holistic healing how do you uh, re- um, get rid of the stress yes that is where your stress management comes into the picture you see if we look at the whole situation rationally then it hurts far less our problem is that we overreact so... stress is bound to be there difficult people are going to be there you can't stop that mm-hmm. how to minimize that problem is the art of good health when we blow up the things when we overreact to them that person has already created problems for you mm. by getting annoyed now you are making yourself even more sick we should be very clear that look he has already done an affront to me mm-hmm. now getting by getting stressed i am creating more problems for him when i was in a newspaper my editor used to keep a sign board facing himself so we were always curious to know what is written on that but his seat was such that we never got a chance to see it was after many years when we managed to go to this side of the seat and see what was written it was written there don't give this idiot a chance to annoy you mm. i mean when somebody sitting in front of him was trying to was annoying him he was reminding himself constantly don't give this idiot a chance to annoy you okay so how do we not do that like so see we all have something like you know it's a professional personal we all think that there are certain things that needs to be done these are some basics and if you are not doing some basics you are bound to get annoyed so how do we not get like uh, how do we deal with that there are three layers to this mm-hmm. first of all our food and mood they are connected okay if you eat uh, junk kind of food you will always be jumpy you would mm-hmm. get annoyed even over small things mm-hmm. and if you are eating the right kind of food 
by nature you would be cool and calm mm. perfect two if you do enough exercise you make enough serotonin and endorphins which are called happiness factors they are happiness compounds so next time you are upset over something don't be indoors mm -hmm. wear your walking shoes and run mm -hmm. you must have seen that army people are considered merry go lucky the fun guys to be with you with anybody have you noticed that you enjoy the company they're very good friends one of the secrets is the intense exercise they put in every morning put that to good use third layer breathing proper breathing ensures that you are more calm and composed that is where your pranayam comes into the picture and finally for your stress management some time has to be spent doing meditation which should be scientifically learned and practiced on a daily basis it should be as regular as going on a walk or for that matter brushing your teeth meditation is something we cannot avoid unfortunately we have time for everything else but not for these essential things if we follow that life would be much easier and happier okay all right i just want to yeah ask a last question so see you said that because of some lifestyle that we don't have and we don't uh, we don't have correct lifestyle and we do we do not eat properly we get disease but what about like the little kids who are just born they are not having any lifestyle and they have cancer and so many deadly diseases or what do you think is the reason for that this is the gift that their parents innocently give them we condemn them to all the diseases and the worst part is sometimes the parents don't get those diseases it is the children who suffer as you well know if the parents are diabetic they gift diabetes to their children if the parents have got blood pressure they gift blood pressure to their children these are the famous diseases but so many other problems they give the propensity to their children they can have this problem from a very early age so this is one more reason why we should follow a healthy lifestyle because it is not only who we who will, who will suffer it will be our children also and for that matter even grandchildren you should know this the effect will go even to our grandchildren so at least be kind to them actually you should be kind to yourself mm -hmm. but if you have no mercy on yourself at you least have, have mercy on the, kids. On, on the kids and your grandkids yeah. don't condemn them to those serious diseases by having fun yourself and making them suffer later in life okay all right okay right. thank you so much for coming to my show do you have anything to say to my viewers of uh the admin show any final comments all i would like to say is that you are the most important person in your life respect yourself don't ruin your life for the sake of one bowl of some fancy food or one plate of another fancy food you are much more important than that thank you very much okay bye have a nice day bye. good luck you too thank you